Let's see if we are in the game this time. Right, I think we're here. I think we're live again, Brian. Right, we're going again. We're going again. Is the audio working? We're all good? Right, I think we're here. I think we're live again, Brian. Boom. Right, we're in. So, right. sorry for anyone who's watching and the, the, went into the last one, but some reason the internet just kicked out, didn't it? Um, so, yeah. take two. We'll pretend that never happened. But as always, we'll keep it real yeah. on limited training. So, uh, it doesn't matter really. So, Brian, where were we, mate? We're on to the first question. We didn't even get started. Uh, we didn't even didn't. get started. So, the question I asked you, mate, what your nutrition, your training, and your relationship with food like at the time. And you said um, you are turning to food for comfort. You are, you had a hectic work schedule. You are eating because you are bored. I think those are the main insights that you gave me there. So yeah. talk a little bit more about that. You know, how, when did you first realize that you are eating for boredom and not because you are hungry? Uh, probably to the point where it was getting a bit out of hand. I couldn't even, like, this might sound absolutely ridiculous, but I couldn't, I was struggling to get out of the car. Yeah, like I guess I struggled to get out of the car, and I, I knew then it was just like it was getting far too much. Yeah. But I'd still do it because uh, I'd still go on and do it because at the time I just thought, oh, it's just another, just another problem that I've got to deal with. You know, what I mean, I didn't, I didn't put that at the front of my problems. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, Brian, you make a good point there. Food is so socially acceptable; it's so convenient. No one judges you if you, if you, if you, if you eat food, but really. It's the same kind of behavior as using anything for comfort, using, you know, gambling, spending money, even drugs and alcohol. We can put them in the um, same category now. Obviously, I, you can have your opinion on which is worse. And I'm not, I know, I'm nowhere near comparing, you know, like someone who's like an alcoholic or a drug addict to someone who's, who just uses food for comfort. But when you think about it, the strategy of having to rely on something to give you a feeling, it's exactly the same, you know. So it is one of, those it is one of those behaviors that if you if you're not aware of or you are putting it to the back of your mind so you said it can spiral out of control can't it and i think there's a lot of people who are maybe listening right now that can relate to that that they've been using food for comfort for too long and that's unfortunately why they are in the position that they are in you know with a body that they don't that they don't like and they are not comfortable with so and um, wh when did you hit that point what was the final straw when you thought you know what i'm done i'm done living this uh, life. i think it was when i bought a top and i struggled to finish in that yeah. thought, I thought, right, like, it's, I, I, I used to wake up and there'd be a mirror right outside my room and I'd go to the toilet every morning and I'd look and I'd think, I absolutely hated my life. Like, I wasn't happy with how I was living. Yeah. That was yeah. the big do, thing. It made you, me even worse. Do you think the, the body confidence, the fact that you didn't like the way you looked, how much of an impact do you think that had on your, on your mental health or do you think it was other things that were worse or do you think that was one of the main reasons? Oh, no, that was a, a bit, probably a big reason. Yeah, because yeah. I'd always say uh, it's a big thing. People on Instagram and social media, you look up to look like someone, don't you? And you want to be like that someone. And that was me. I was like, why can't I look like him in the gym? Yeah. That's got a bloody six pack, even though I tried from like I was yeah. in, I was in the school. I was going to the gym in 2016 to try and lose weight and it never bloody happened. And then all of a sudden it just it clicks. I think that's you, you, you fail and you fail and you fail and you fail. And then you hit a point where you know you'll you'll just smash it. And I think that's when you know we you both agree. You made a great point there and you say you fail, but when you think about failure, the only time when failure is real is when you give up and that is it. You never try again. You never gave up, mate. You had a few attempts. Like, I don't know if anyone works this, but we actually worked together. That was at the start of last year? Uh, this time last year, I came in May, April time again because I was going holiday. Yeah. And uh, we tried to work again again. I failed. Went back in September. I didn't fail. We just gave up. Went again to try again in September. Of 2019, gave up again, and then we came together back in April. Yeah, yeah. So you had a few, you had a few attempts, and I think for you, one of the biggest things that was holding you back was the the reliance on maybe going out on a on you know a night out, and that was lowering your energy to where you would start the week on a Monday and not wanting to die, and then that would just you know that would just spiral into into a, a cycle of weeks, you know. So you you kind of had lifestyle habits. It wasn't just the eating. It was the the kind of not training, not looking after yourself. And I think you'll admit yourself. You used to you know you used to use going on nights out and having a drink of alcohol to kind of get over that lack of confidence that you had within oh, your own, with yourself. Yeah, def yeah, definitely. That was a big thing. Drink going out for me on the weekend was a massive thing back then. Like, yeah. don't get as wrong. I still go out now. But I know yeah, you've got to when, incorporate it into your life, mate. I know 100%. when enough's enough, and I know when not to go over the edge. And I know that 
like, for example, I think I went for a couple of pints on Saturday night, but I didn't go over the top because I knew on Sunday morning I wanted to go on my bike. Exactly, and then that mate. was it. I was in exactly. my house by 10 o'clock. Exactly. So, Great point. Great point. A lot of people, mate, they don't have any powerful leverage to stop them going out. They've got no kind of, they've got nothing to work towards that inspires them. So if you just plan the weekend where you've got nothing to do, of course you're going to go out on the drink because you're sitting there bored. Yeah, definitely. You turn to food, get takeaways, you're going to go out on the drink. So you have to you have to figure out something that inspires you, mate. So I think one of the main things that was the difference between you, you being successful this time that we worked together versus last year was obviously the lockdown, gyms were shut. So you oh. had the strategy to be able to exercise, didn't you? And obviously that was the fact- best thing. We've said this before. We've been over it before. It was the best thing that ever happened for me personally. Lockdown yeah. happened. Some people absolutely hated it. For me, it was the blessing that actually happened. You know, yeah, and if, I don't, if lockdown didn't happen, I don't think we would have done what we would have done. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, you don't know that because like I say you can't predict the future and you don't know what would have happened. But yeah, it clicked for you, didn't it? And at that oh, time, God. you fell in love with, uh, with riding your bike, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I fell, not just that, I fell in love with running. I don't run as much now because I try to keep myself me, me legs and that fine for me bike but like yeah, I used to hate running confidence was a big thing with running I used to think oh people are going to laugh at us you know big lad trying to run you know I wasn't, I'd get over took on the leads and I'd be thinking yeah nah everyone's got to be laughing at us yeah and I just put that at the back of my mind and just think what I'm doing here is going to benefit me it's not going to benefit anyone else so yeah, yeah, good point, mate. And, and it's that, again, it's that confidence of, you know, everyone asks me, Sam, how do I get more confidence? And they might mean confidence in speaking to people, in being more confident at work or just in that in that general life, or they might mean body confident. You know, it's kind of the same thing. But bottom yeah. line is, guys, confidence is created. Confidence is like every other emotion and feeling that you have. You create it through action. Um, you've muted yourself, Brian. Oh, I, mean, thought, well, I thought I thought I pressed something. I didn't know what I pressed. Right, don't worry. I'll keep you right. Don't worry. Yeah. So confidence is created. So when people say, "Oh, I've got low confidence," how do you think you overcome that confidence? You've simply got to set yourself a target that slightly pushes you, and once you achieve it, you go, "Wow, I've done that now." Momentum, energy. You know, you, you're not. If you keep setting yourself goals and then not doing it, you're just going to shatter your confidence. So mm-hmm. you, you know, saying that you are comparing yourself to others and thinking about what other, other people think, that was the barrier that was stopping you from achieving what you wanted to. Whereas if you just remove that barrier, change your perception on, you know, what other people thought, the things that were holding you back, and you just hit that first target. You know, your confidence just started snowballing every week, and it all come from that one change. Yeah, it did. It did. So yeah, Brian, moving on. Moving on, obviously, we can, we can touch on your exercise and things. That's later questions on. But second question I had for you, you know, the biggest mistakes that you made in your nutrition, like what were some of the misconceptions that you used to have back then, you know, that Brian on the left? Now, this is probably the least stupid thing, but roast dinners. People always say roast dinners are good for you, don't they? Because they've got, the, they've got your carrots and you've got your bloody cauliflowers and that. So I used to eat quite a bit of roast dinners, not just on a Sunday. I used to have a couple of week in there, like things like, Pastas and that lasagnas and that were great for you. They are to a certain extent, but when you go overboard and you have all the cheese on that you have and then yeah. all the mashed to- mashed potato that you have because it's all at the end of the day it's all got stuff in it. You just yeah. you don't think of what what's actually in it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, of course. Well, that brings us on to, to this program we are in right now, working together inside Project Limitless. The reason I created this program is because a lot of people. They don't know what calories are. They don't know what macros are. They don't know how to track them. They don't know what numbers are in their foods. And they continue to overeat. Like I've said this before, if you are overweight or you struggle to lose weight, it's down to one simple thing. Your calories are wrong. You're eating too many calories for your body type. There is no ifs or buts. You You can say, I'm eating healthy. I'm doing all the exercise in the world. But if your calories aren't right, you will never drop body fat. So basically... Project Limitless, I created this because this is the system I use for my online coaching clients like you were inside the program, is figuring out what your calories are and then just fitting them with foods that you like that you know will will fit those calories so you get results. So all we did inside the program, mate, like the concept, misconceptions you had with nutrition was, was basically just the amount of calories and portion sizes. That's only, that's where you were going wrong. You knew what healthy food was. You knew how to train. You knew what things you needed to eat, but you were just having the wrong amounts of it, weren't you? Yeah, oh, I definitely, I was a big one where I, I'd eat too fast. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do think that. other people have had that, that problem where they, they would eat too fast and hide the food down the throat. And then 20 minutes later, you'd be hungry again because it, it, yeah. it's right what they say. The slower you eat, the more you, the fuller you get because it takes longer for your brain to register. 
yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a good tip that mate. Good tip that I, I used to be terrible for that as well. Um, I used to be terrible for eating too much. You know what I actually used to do? Funny story. When I, obviously I've competed in bodybuilding back in the day, I don't do that anymore. Thank God. Um, <laughs> but once I used to do that, um, I used to actually get like a tiny little spoon to eat my meals with because it would last longer. You know, I found so, uh, uh, like watching things on your phone or like listening to podcasts tends to because you're more you you more want to know what's going on in that other than scoffing your food down your yeah, throat and yeah being too actually too into your food is sometimes a bad thing it's a barrier that holds people back I know some people their whole life revolves around food oh whole I do life, I love, I love life, I love and I'm not saying it's a bad thing I mean there's nothing wrong for you like your group who doesn't but there's, there's a point to where people like their life revolves around food like they can't they can't seem to enjoy themselves unless they're eating and going out drinking and going out on the weekend and going to restaurants and you know having takeaways the the, the whole enjoyance and ha- enjoyment and happiness of their life seem to revolve around food and they're very into it like if you can distract yourself while you're eating with something that inspires you you're not going to have as much attention on that food you know so that's a good point like if, you, if you're struggling to, to break your attention to food and what it gives you and, you, and how much you think about it distract yourself with other things while you're reading you know what i mean yeah oh, I having definitely. that reliance on food like looking forward to your food that much it can sometimes be a, a bad thing you need to see food for what it is and see food for fuel to make you feel good physically and mentally you shouldn't see it as like a like the main source of pleasure in your life you know i think people who do see it as that and the, the rely on food too much to give them a feeling that they want that they tend to have problems sticking to diets and calorie intakes because food ultimately is one of their number one priorities that makes them feel good so you have to figure out what your other values are and you found that didn't you, you found um breaking down you know exercise barriers cycling running dropping weight gaining confidence that was that you gave more of a fuck about that than your food didn't you so you not oh, you no longer had to rely on food to make you feel good because that's all you that's all it was before brian wasn't it you had low confidence you know what feeling anxious yeah. feeling feeling frustrated with your life so what did you do you turned to food to make you feel better it's like big one for me was doing things i never thought i was able to do like i remember i touched on this with you like like one time i don't know like, was it like a 30 mile ride or something and i text yeah, us yeah. like sam my legs are in absolute bits like i'm feeling like, but i feel great because it, it's powerful, you know, if you do something that makes you confident, it's so much more powerful for your, your mental side of things. It makes you so much more better. Like, I ran, like, a, like a 10K or summit, and I couldn't even run 2K at the start of April. And then mm-hmm. just analysing from when what you started to where you've come, that's a massive thing. Yeah, yeah. Good, good point, mate. Do you know what it is? A lot of people who struggle with confidence, they are too busy comparing themselves to the ideal what they think they should be and how they think they should look and what they should achieve and they forget they totally forget what they have achieved like you have to reflect on yourself and your actual measurements of how far you've came to gain confidence Lord, I, I train a lot of people obviously inside the coaching program so let's say if someone checks in with me this happens a lot they might not have dropped weight that week sometimes clients will be like sam it's not working i feel frustrated my weight hasn't dropped this week i'm like hang on you've been training with me for six weeks you drop two pounds every single week this is the first week you haven't dropped weight. And what have you done? You've totally forgot about all of those things you've achieved. The fact that you've dropped weight every week and you've you've changed your eating habits and you, you're doing it, you're losing weight, and you've just focused on, oh, I didn't do it this week. You know, it's always future-based thinking and comparison. But you 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 made sure you reflected on the on the previous week, every single week during the checking in process. You told us all the things you achieved, how you progress your cycles, your runs, all of that stuff. And you gained confidence through actually looking at yourself critically and going, wow, I've actually accomplished that. So many people don't even do that. And it's such a simple task. Reviewing your progress, people don't even do it. They're all for complaining about it when it doesn't go to plan and comparing themselves to others. But you'll never actually critically analyze their actions and say, you know what, I'm proud of myself. You have to put the work in and make yourself feel proud. It's an important oh, I, thing. No one else is going to make you feel proud. You have you to make yourself uh, proud. You can't live a life a lie like what we used to do. I'd go out, train a couple of days, Go on the drink on the weekend, check in, and I'll be like, oh shit, I like look at the scales, and I'll be like, why? Yeah. If you don't put the work in, and if you don't yeah, want yeah. to put, if you don't want to do it yourself, there's no point in doing it, I think. Yeah. Do you know what you I can't mean? get upset over the work you didn't do, and unfortunately, some people do. Um, but even even then, when they are putting in the work, a lot of people have got that mindset and that perception that they'll focus on the negative only. So let's say they haven't dropped weight, they'll be, oh, I haven't dropped weight this week, and they'll totally forget about the three weeks previous where they did drop weight and where they did progress. So you haven't you haven't done what you want in one week, and you're ready to burn your whole bridge down because it didn't go to plan. Too many people have that mindset. They're always comparing themselves to the ideal rather than comparing where they started. Definitely. Yeah. comparing where you started to where you are now was such a powerful insight I not, not a lot of people do and you were critical that every week you wrote in detail this is what I've achieved Sam and this is what I'm proud of you told me that 
Oh, yeah, did I? Yeah, did I remember. Telling yourself, affirming to yourself, this is what I'm proud of, I achieved. That's a huge, uh, it's a huge thing that not a lot of people do. We never ask ourselves how we feel. We never ask ourselves what our biggest wins are. And obviously, this is what we focus on a lot inside the one one program. It's not just nutrition. It's mindset as well and doing the things needed to, pr to promote your own positive mindset, which can only come from you. So this is if, I, if you had to ask me, um, you know, say, Sam, what do you summarize about this before and after here? I'll say the one on the left didn't take responsibility for how we felt, used food as a comfort and didn't ask them didn't didn't ask themselves powerful questions where they reviewed where they started you, you were always thinking about the future and what you haven't got where this brian on the on the right he takes responsibility for the way he feels he specifically prioritizes actions which he knows will make him feel better and he's willing to review his progress you're willing to focus on your wins to promote self-confidence people who haven't got any confidence they never focus on anything they're good at they only focus on the things they haven't got or the things that don't do or the things they don't like about themselves that perspective, that mindset shift is so powerful. If you want to be a successful diet and you want to get fat loss results, you have to get good at making yourself feel confident, making yourself feel proud. And you can only do that by comparing where you are now to where you started, not by comparing where you are now to where you want to be. Because where you want to be doesn't exist. It's an ideal goal in your mind, which is great, but you haven't got any physical data to compare that to now. And normally when you compare yourself to where you really want to be, you're not there yet, are you? Because if you were, you would already be there. So you just feel negative. Compare yourself to where you started. That, that's one of my biggest tips. Um, so that's a great insight, Brian, that you that you specifically did. Um, so moving on to this next question, obviously related to Project Limitless, we, we learn about calories and macros inside of this program. So when did you first learn about that? Obviously, you've been working with me in the one-on-one -on -one program, but when did you start to get an understanding of what nutrition is? Because it's just numbers, isn't it, Brian? Inside this program or is, in the, as a whole? Just in general, mate, just for you. When did you start learning about calories and macros and the breakdown of them? Probably when we first started training together last year. Yeah. I knew... I've got a way better understanding this time around. You know, I can go into my fitness pile and just log in and I know what it has and what it is and I can just follow it like that. Whereas, so yeah, it probably would have been April last year and I was mm -hmm. still, I'm not the, I wouldn't say I'm the best at it. I was a bit more of a rookie back then, but I've got a swift idea now of if I'm on the go, do you know, like if I'm on the go, like I did the other week, I ran an hour, you know, I found like chicken tikka breasts, like yeah. 60 grams per pack. It was like 150 gram chicken breast I can have one of them you know yeah. before I'd grab a, a sandwich they're good but they contain a lot of you know like 12, 12 grams worth of fat yeah. and whatnot so I've pretty much cleared up on it now like yeah great point Brian I think what you said there if you're on the go and you haven't prepared your meals that is one of the biggest barriers that stops people from following the calories I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who will they'll check in with me and say Sam I fell off track this week because I didn't prep my food this week and I just I was just too busy and I had work and I'm like, well, you do realize that just because you couldn't follow your prep diet plan that you normally follow, you had your calories and your macros to fall back on. Now, if you uh, were aware of this and you knew how to basically navigate yourself around my fitness pal or one of the other tracking apps, you wouldn't have to be an expert. I'm not asking you to do anything out of the ordinary here. I'm just saying you would have had targets to hit. It's just like hitting a budget. So you know if you're on the go, Brian, you're like, well, right, I've got me my fitness pal account. I know what my numbers are. Let's just grab something that fits those numbers. It might not be perfect, but at least you've got something to aim for for the day. Rather that than just saying, oh, I couldn't follow it. You know what I mean? So one massive barrier that stops people from following their diets is knowing what to do when ultimately plan A goes out the window. Because if you only got one plan plan a for your diet you'll feel you've got to have a c a b a d all the way to z you've got to have quick fire actions that you can take to stay on track and you've got that now by having the ability that you've learned from this program it's just basically hit numbers with ease you know so how how much uh, how much that is how much that's changed your life knowing about calories and macros and how you can still stay on track even if you're eating out even if you're eating out on the go going to restaurants just know numbers and how to fit them how much has that changed your results you oh massively like yeah not saying this in a bad way, but for example, like I think I'm a bit harsh on myself when it comes to cheat days. But like for example, if I was having an Andos, I'd implement that into my fitness plan. I don't know if many people do try and put the cheat meal into the, my fitness plan, but I will, and then I'll figure out say how much what I mean. I know it's not going to be the best of stuff, but it's a cheat meal. Do you know what I mean? And then I can gather gather that and compare it to like the next week and then yeah. it's all about comparing our thing in my fitness pal it's, it's absolutely amazing before I used to hate doing it but now like I've got them logged as a I know what I'm having every single day so I've already got the meals logged so it's that you swipe on click it if I need to change something I'll change something yeah, that's that's powerful, mate. Like obviously, I, I taught in week two, I think it was. And um, you should obviously know what your macros are, and you can kind of track on the go, right? But you should have quick fire meals that you know you know the numbers of. My fitness pal does it for you. We're not asking anyone I, to do anything out of the ordinary. The group it together for you. Yeah. So 
you can go in like on the night time if you've got like five minutes go in log your breakfast log it and then it's there for you next morning you go in click it bang done yeah exactly so someone listening right now whether that's someone inside the group or watching this later on if they don't have a clue about macros and calories right now in your opinion brian on a scale of one to ten how easy it for is it for a complete novice to get a handle on my fitness pal and know about calories and macros it's the easiest thing in the world to do it is it's the easiest Anyone thing to do it. i made a big song and dance about it when i first started and it's just 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 list like look at the app you'll figure it out for yourself because it's pretty self-explanatory but i used to think oh bloody hell what are they about carbs no this if you've got your numbers i don't really use the calorie thing i'm gonna use more the nutrition thing at the bottom and hit the yeah make sure i've got yeah. the macros more than well, calories if you hit the macros months. brian you hit the calories by default anyway so it's the same thing really um, and i don't listen to that uh, yeah. i think it's a bit dis- disbelieving when you click complete your diary and it's saying like oh in three weeks you yeah, were weird. That, man. Yeah. A certain bloody weird. Yeah. That's one thing I'll say about my fitness pal is obviously it's great for tracking. It gives you your database for your foods, but their recommended settings, they aren't they aren't very good. I think if you had done my fitness pal's recommended settings for your nutrition, you wouldn't have achieved results like that, mate. Um, you specifically had a higher protein diet to help with your recovery. We increased your carbs when your exercise got higher and harder. We actually recently upped your calories by about three, four hundred, didn't we? And you dropped weight. I'm, I'm at like a... Yeah. Yeah. 2,500 or something now and I'm still dropping yeah. a pound or something which I'm happy exactly. with like we've talked about my stage where I'm at in my life now is just to stay where I'm at and if I keep dropping weight I keep dropping weight you know yeah yeah. well what you're doing Brian is improving your metabolism by you've been very consistent you've got all of that weight off the excess weight that you didn't, your body didn't need but now you're in, in your prime almost and your body will just start to continue to burn body fat while building muscle improving your metabolism because you've been mega consistent with your macros mate like those results that's not an accident you know, and that's what I'll say for anyone listening out there. If you haven't dropped weight before, you struggle to lose weight, it's not an accident. You might have tried really hard, honestly. Like I, ho- I hold my hands up and say from the bottom of my heart, you might have tried your hardest. But the bottom line, if you didn't lose weight, it's because your calories were wrong. No ifs, no buts. It's because your calories were wrong. Once you get your calories wrong, you remain consistent with that. Your body will has no choice to not respond because it's 100% science. You know, essentially. So all we did, Brian, figure out a strategy. We figured out what environmental barriers could potentially throw you off. And we just created an easy to follow meal plan with macros and calories so you could mix a match between them and you are consistent. You know, so that, that's what happens when you uh, when you achieve those results, Brian. So there you go. Um okay, moving on, mate. Um what was the biggest challenge you faced in learning about nutrition at the start? Like what freaked you out the most about nutrition? Eh. Hey. Well, that's a good question, that. I would think. At the very start, or when, whenever, or like back in April, or... Well, let's, let's not say at the start. Let's just say in general, within your lifetime, you know, what, what kind of things were you like, I just don't have a clue about that. Like, Finding how am I supposed out what to learn fats that? were good for you and weren't good for you. That was a big thing for me. Uh, I don't know what it's like for other people. Obviously, if they aren't in your online coach and they won't have a set meal in that one, but like for me, I have like 30 grams of chocolates, on a night time and for me at that at the start when we started I was like hey what and then like over the time like you you can find out what fats are actually benefit your body and which don't so that was a big thing for yeah. me because I used to I used to like hold off from going like towards foods that I've got like high fat quantities at all like even if I saw a tiny bit of fat in like the nutrition thing on the food I'd hold away from it yeah, well, you know, Brian, fat is an essential nutrient. So what we taught in the program, obviously, fats is essential to survive. Like, the only nutrient that you don't technically don't need, I'm going to quickly quickly charge every minute, it's literally come up 10%. I don't, no, want this to go off. I don't want this to go off for a second time. Yeah. So what was I saying? So, yeah, as fats are an essential nutrient. So a lot of people say, I don't fat on that. I mean, you can even ask some people the question of calories. What's a calorie? And some people are like, oh, they're bad. I'm going to stay away from them. It's like, calories are in everything. You know what I mean? So it's that misconception, I think, of the numbers and, and the nutrients and what they actually do for you. People just associate fat as in like nutritional fat with body fat. That's simply not the case. Too much body fat is down to too many calories, not fat. So it's all about understanding what you need to eat for your health, but also understanding what you need to eat for your calorie amount to lose the weight that you want, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I understand that completely. And um, the right kind of fats and things, I get it, I get it. But as you said before, you had a bit of chocolate on your plan and you're thinking, oh, how, can I, how can I lose weight eating this? It's like, well, it fits your numbers, you know? So I always go back to that. It's response to what anyone says it's about quality. foods. It's like, it fits your numbers. 
And if it fits your numbers, and if, if, if you're either tracking them yourself the way you know the work, or you're working with someone like me who pre track them for you, as long as you remain consistent with that most of the time, it's impossible not to lose weight, you know? So when people come to me and say, Sarge, I've done everything. I've had people who are adamant that tried everything, and they, they think that there's something wrong with their metabolism or their body, and I'm like, look, there's nothing wrong. Your body's fine. You just weren't hitting the right calories, you know what I mean? And that's, that's essentially it. Well, how, do you think you overcome, how do you think you overcome those, Brian? Overcome those nutritional challenges and actually got uh, results? Just learning every week. Learning what I, what I ate was good. And uh, like I said, again, the 30 gram of chocolate on the night time, that's a big, it's like, I'm eating something that's labelled as the, one of the worst things you can eat, but I'm still dropping weight. It's as long as you, what's the word I'm looking for? eat the things that you enjoy and just limit them 30 grams isn't a lot it's like a couple of chunks but it yeah. you still think you're having chocolate it, it yeah. is you know what i mean you can have a so bar you can have a whisper bar if you really how want was your it. transition brian between like just using junk food as comfort and eating as much as you wanted versus incorporating it smallly into your diet what was the transition like was it hard for you to do that at first Did you no no it was uh, it's a it was if i probably if i didn't have that bit of chocolate though like Peanut butter or a cereal brown in the nighttime probably would have been a probably would have st- found it a bit harder to stick to it. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I touched on when I uh, when I when we first shot. I was like, can you just make sure I've got a little bit of chocolate because I w- I was used to it. You know, every single day I was coming in and I was having a couple of bars of chocolate or a couple of packets of chips. I know it's not the same, but it's something that's got fat in it, greasy in it, what what not. You know what I mean? It tastes nice. <laughs> it tastes nice exactly. Yeah. It's comfort in it. You know, if I've had yeah. a bad day at work. I've got to look forward to for me a little bit of chocolate on the time. It's 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 very disciplined to say I'll I, I can have a little bit frequently, like every day, and yeah. leave the line like that. You know, not a lot of people. Some people struggle. It's a perspective thing again. You know, some people, Brian, I could have asked them that question. They could have went, "Nah, it's really hard." I've got clients who they only eat clean food because they're like, "Oh, I can't just have a little bit of chocolate. I've got to have the whole bar. I'd rather not have it." And I'm like, "Well, you know, you can. You know, like I'm telling you, you can. Oh, no, it doesn't work for us. I'd rather have it cheaply on the weekend." I'm like, you know what, if that works for you and that's what you prefer and that's what gets your results, fine. But most people, I think, would benefit from your approach, having a little bit, little and often. Like, I have um, some of the stuff. I have ice lollies every day. I have about well, I've just lollies. turned, I know it's not in my plan, but I've started adding it to a plan. I love an ice lolly, especially when I get in from where I'm up, and especially when I was roasting hot the other the last couple of weeks. You try and get, like, sugar. I've, I don't know if you've, you've might have heard about it, you know, the ice cream that has, like, is it no, like, it's got calories yeah, in it, but it's not as bad as like, off. yeah, I, I bought a tub of that the other week and I've like having like 50 grams a night of it and I was implementing that and just switching around and then again, it fit in my macros and it wouldn't amazing. affect me progress. Know, amazing, it, it's I it's mean, class. Whoever invented that stuff, like I just want to, I just want to applaud them because that halo oh. top, that well, tastes, it's a kick in the arse off Ben and Jerry. It's not as good as Ben and Jerry's, but it's not far off. It's not far off. Um, it's it's pretty good, you know. And, and this is the thing, Brian. We've got wonderful products such as that now. We talked about this a lot in this program. The, the, all of the zero calorie sy- syrups and sauces we've got, the low calorie ice cream and sweets, and all these low calorie macro friendly products. Why are people not incorporating these into their life? Like, how are people so struggling to lose weight when there's such things as this about? And all it comes down to is ignorance. Like no one's told them. No one's told people about this. That's why they don't know. That's why they're struggling. Another thing is, uh, I don't know if many people watch this, I've got like a sweet tooth. You can buy them little jelly pots. I've got like 10 calories per pot, no added sugars, no now. And they're like 75 pence a pot from Whole Bounds. I usually keep a couple in the fridge. If I got in from a run or something, and I needed a bit of sugar or a little bit of something like sweet to keep me, to get my mouth water. And then I'll have a little pot. It's only like 10 calories or something. I know, it's, not gonna, so- it's not going to affect you. Exactly. Think about that behavior habit. If someone is is prone to fall off track and eat food for comfort, let's say on it's on a night time, you watch until you've ate all your calories, you've had a stressful day at work, you're a little bit peckish or bored rather, depending on what the responses that you get from hunger. Let's say you're bored and a little bit hungry, a little bit stressed. You're like, oh, I know there's some ice cream in the fridge. I said I wasn't going to have it and I've used my macros. Oh, go on then, I'm going to have it. I don't care. Whereas if you went, you know what, I'm still a bit peckish, but oh, I've got a 10 calorie jelly there. Yeah, you're still satisfying your urge to eat something which is nothing right. wrong with that you've just made a, a choice between swapping to a lower calorie product versus another one so that comfort food that you ate the comfort the, the actual behavior of comfort eating or having something as a snack to take your mind off whatever you haven't eliminated it you've just replaced the product with something that fit your macros versus something that didn't and that is the difference between gaining weight and losing weight so if you struggle to get a handle on comfort eating or you're always overeating, you, you turn to food for comfort and you're always snacking, think about what you're snacking on. 
If you have an idea about calories and macros, which by the way, this program will tell you, <laughs> this program will tell you all of that. Um, if you have, if you struggle to turn to food for comfort, you just need to know what foods to eat. And once you figure out macros, calories, what they are and what foods you can implement, you will never need to turn to food for comfort again. Food you enjoy, I think, is a big thing. I think for me, uh, when I first, like, like when I was starting April, I'd make boring food. I'd make yeah. plain rice, plain chicken, plain veg. That was it. There's loads of things like recipes you can go on. Like you've done even done a recipe book, you know. You yeah, go I've, on been, I've got about a hundred. I've got about hundred. If you, if you, if you, the thing, big one, a big thing is people don't know how to kind of, kind of cook. They don't know what to put on the, the chicken and yeah, they put no effort into that prep, and then they wonder why the food tastes like crap in the fall. So. Like an hour, a good hour or so, or two hours when I when I'm off work and I batch cook everything. Yeah. And it just makes life so much easier. It is. I think people fall off track when they don't have, don't enjoy the foods they enjoy, like they eat. Mate, why would you want to eat something you don't like? You know, it's a one. It's a. I say it all the time. People ask me, Sam, is this food okay? Sam, is that food okay? I'm like, do you like it? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, eat it. You know, <laughs> I've, I've been eating. I've been eating this for breakfast. Now I'm, I'm. I don't really like it, but it's meant to be good for you, isn't it? I'm like, yes, it's good for you. But why? If you if you don't like eggs and salmon every morning, don't eat it. Have something else. If you don't like breakfast, don't have breakfast. Save your calories for later. You've got to always ask yourself the question, does this fit my numbers? Because that is the number one key to fat loss. It's numbers. It's hitting your calories, hitting your macros, remaining in a deficit, and that's what burns the body fat. So people need to stop thinking as food. I know you do this now. Stop thinking as food and good and bad. It's not good and bad. Some contains higher calories than other. That's it. So once you figure out what foods you like, how to implement them into a certain calorie amount, you will always drop body fat and you will always enjoy your diet. Not enjoying your diet is a huge barrier that people use. They use it as a punishment. They'll eat foods they hate because they think that's what they have to do to get the result that they want. If you don't enjoy the oh, process, no. Brian, are you gonna are you gonna get the result you want if you don't enjoy the process? I was making the burgers and everything out, you know, five percent mince. I make exactly. burgers out of them. Exactly. In, you can get creative. It's what Whatever you want to do, really. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff. So that brings us on to the next bit, Brian. When did you start? When did you start getting? Sorry, mate. I think you, you broke up a little bit. I didn't say the last bit. Um, but I was just going to say, move on to my next question. When did you start to feel confident in tracking and your nutrition? So obviously you've got that now, where you know what to cook, you know how to spice it up, you know how to hit your numbers. When do you think you just started yeah. and get it where you were just like, you know what, this is it now. It's is like it, this is what this is a part of my life. Probably around like the first month or something working together this year. Yeah. Obviously, I had nothing else to do to that, so I was on my fitness pal every couple of hours and it just all fell into place, you know. It was nutrition, eh? I think the recipe book that you brought out was a big insight to see what you can make and that was good for you and, you know, like stir fries, I have stir fries in that now, I have pastas, eh? like chilli, like a ch- like a minced chilli. Yeah. Track track everything, you know, put a tomato puree, track that on your my fitness pal, everything. You can scan a barcode on everything. Literally anything that you can scan so a barcode you, on, it'll come up with what's in it. So have you benefited from those recipes that I provided with you in this program, have you? Oh, definitely. Like, I, I like that prawn linguine one. I often have that sometimes. Because everyone likes pasta, you know, don't right? you? Do you know what I mean? And as you know, that, that meal is using healthy ingredients, but that's maybe something to someone would rather go, oh, I'm on a diet, I can't have that. You can. Oh, I, Why? I definitely, because the yeah. calories and macros are pre-tracked for you, and you've just got to hit them in your numbers. Think of the like budget. Like, it's like money. You've got a certain amount of proteins, carb, fats, certain amount of money. You know how much money you've got when you go into the shop to buy something. If you can afford it and you want it, you buy it. Same with food. If you, if you want it and you can afford it, aka fit it into your numbers, have it. You know? Eating things you love is powerful and knowing, knowing how to eat the things you love and fit them into your numbers is the key to fat loss. Is the key to fat loss. I'm losing the lights. Yeah, the lights out there. The lights out there. <laughs> I've got no lights, so we're going to have to we're gonna have to go for it. Otherwise, I'll be sitting in the dark here. Um, so, next question, Brian. What is the biggest insights you've learned from not just Project Limitless, but from Limitless Training yourself? Uh, don't be hard on yourself. I think it's a big one. Don't be too hard. Uh, take it a day at a time. If you don't drop a pound within, I don't know. I, I, when I first started, I think me and you set big goals like we did. Drop so much weight by June. Drop so much weight by here. And I think that was a big jump. Normally, I just take it day at a time. But the biggest insight would be be confident. Because I was always confident in the just never give up, even if you're having a bad day. Like I used to have bad days, but I found something I enjoyed, and I think that's the reason I only kept on go, on track. If I didn't do what I wasn't in, in like it, I probably wouldn't have stayed on track. I yeah. fell in love with cycling. That's how I've managed to stay on track. There's loads of yeah. things you can, if you don't like the gym, 
go swimming. You don't. You don't have to do. Don't do things. Do more of the things yeah, you want, less of the things you hate. I preach that a lot, mate. And that comes. That goes for life in general. That goes for your diet. If you continually eat things you hate, you're not going to follow it. If you continue forcing yourself to do an exercise you hate, chances are you're going to fall off track. If you figure out what foods do I like, what exercise do I like, and you just do more of the things you love. You'll, you'll, you'll have great results, mate. So that's everything the Limitless Trainer and myself tries to promote. And, and you grasp that, mate. You grasp that from the off. Oh, I Loads of people said, how did you do it during lockdown? The gyms and that. I just uh, fell in love with swimming. You know what I mean? If you don't like go, you can go walking. Like, I used to go hiking a bit, like, when it was sunny and that, sun, uh, sunny during lockdown, like, to Hamsley Forest and that. You burn a couple hundred calories doing that. Yeah. Do you know I know, mate. You don't have to go to the gym and... People think you have to go to the gym and bash the weights. Yeah, it helps, but... If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Exactly, mate. Exactly. I think that 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 lack of confidence that a lot of people have, and, and a lot of women do as well. A lot of women reach out to me, Sam, and I'm thinking about starting the gym, but it petrifies us. I don't want to train in front of people. I'm scared of what other people think. And if that's you, you know what? So what? That's totally cool. You are where you are right now. And the good thing about it is you, you, you're you admitting it rather than trying to do something you hate. I'd rather someone tell me, say, Sam, I'm not confident enough to go to the gym. Do I have to? And I'd say, no. Why should you force yourself to do something that you don't get a mental reward from? If you're not ready, like you said, take the pressure off yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. You are where you are right now. And it's all about reflecting on where you are, where you've come. You'd rather do baby steps than bite off more than you can chew. And then lower your state, lower your mood, lower your confidence. If you try and do something that scares the shit out of you. Like you say, oh, I'm just going to force myself to go to the gym. And if you know you're not confident enough, you know you're not going to try hard. You know you're not going to see the benefits in it. And you're just going to end up using it as an excuse as to why you're falling off track. And a lot of people hide behind the reasons like that. Oh, I went to the gym, but I wasn't confident. And they'll, they'll use that as an excuse to fall off track. It's like, well, you tried something that you didn't like, and then you give up. I definitely. That's what, that's what I used to happen to me. I, that's why. Yeah. Another big thing I used to feel. I, I enjoyed going to the gym. I just, I don't think I ever pushed myself at, at the gym enough to to be able to drop body fat. I'd, I'd say I'd go, but really, I, I, did I go and give 100% effort? No, because I didn't yeah. really enjoy it. Whereas this time, exactly, I've, I've, I, I find something I enjoy doing. You know You've what got I mean? to. So, You've got, to, you've got to do something you enjoy. So anyone listening now, if you feel like you have to force yourself to go to the gym or you have to force yourself to do a specific exercise, the chances are it's the wrong thing for you. And like Brian, you're going to have to figure out some kind of exercise, some kind of calorie burning opportunity that works for you. It should be non-negotiable. Your exercise should be something that you look forward to. It should be something that you're doing to benefit your life, not as a hindrance. Most people see it as a chore. You should never feel that. If you feel that, you've got the wrong approach. You either need to change your perspective on what exercise is doing for you. You're either not aware of the benefits it's doing, or you need to change your exercise. You know, so you hit the nail on the head, mate. Do more of the stuff you love. So, what's your uh, what's your biggest three take homes from this specific program, Brian? Project Limitless. So, what's the top three things you've learned inside Project Limitless? How to able to go out on the go, like in with your friends and that, and manage to yeah. still track it and still get the progress you want. Uh, number two probably will be the alcohol thing. The al- yeah, al- I mean, yeah. About alcohol. That was a big learning curve. Uh, so I tend not to drink pints anymore. <laughs> I tend to try and drink the spirits. Coors um, Light, mate. Coors Light. Bud Light's got off the car. It was a regular pint. Has it? Loads yeah, yeah. Well, no, did the... you not see last week's um, thing I showed you on my fitness pal? I did, but I was, I was confused about it. And number three is probably a uh, probably my my fitness pal learning the insides and out was probably a good thing to me because although I said I was pretty I knew what I was doing it's always good to learn out the bits that you didn't know about it. Yeah, my fitness pal just makes everything so much easier. There's other there's other calorie tracking apps as well. It doesn't have to be my fitness pal. That's the one we use inside Limitless Training though, just because I've been using it since two thousand. 2011, I'm pretty much an expert on it. You know, I know what to look out for, what not to do, and, and how to track, and you know how to eat on the go, scan things. You know, it's it's pretty easy for me. But yeah, from the three things you've said, obviously the social occasions, that's another barrier that might stop people getting the results from they want. They diet hard Monday to Friday. The weekend comes, they've made plans to bought on the drink, they've made plans to have a takeaway, they've made plans to bought for a restaurant, and they say it as like, well, oh, I trained hard for five days, so two days off plan is going to be all right, isn't it? But then they overconsume their numbers. And then the calories burned during the week, Monday to Friday, they've just been put back on over that two days of overeating, haven't they? So I think understanding how you can incorporate social occasions, like you mentioned before, you can go to Nando's, can't you? You can fit a meal into your macros. Oh, definitely. I think if you if you know you're going to hit something like Nando's or something like that, I wouldn't personally do like advise it myself, but normally try and fast a couple of meals out of your plan. I know you, you really you really shouldn't, but it'll make, Man, it'll make that's up... That's a good point. It'll make up calories. for like... 
you'll save calories and you'll save macronutrients that you can add and it won't be as big of a deficit. Like you won't hit your progress as much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great point because you have to think of it as, again, it's numbers. Whatever calories you've burned off for the week, let's say if someone eats, sorry, they eat a certain diet where they're in a 500 calorie deficit each day, okay? That's only three and a half thousand for the week. So that's three and a half thousand calories. You know, in theory, they suggest that three and a half thousand calories is one pound of body fat. That like if you burn three and a half thousand calories, you burn a pound of body fat. So let's say for you to be in your rate of loss of a pound a week, okay, which is a standard rate of loss, a pound a week is great. And um, if you're losing a pound a week, you're in a deficit, you burn a body fat. So let's say this person saved up 3,500 calories from Monday to Friday, they burn all those calories off. If they over consume by three and a half thousand on a weekend, which is very easy to do. We know that there's about 2,000 calories of Domino's pizza, you know, throwing a Ben and Jerry's and 10 pints the night before. There's your three and a half calories, three, three and a half thousand calories done. You've worked hard all week to hit those, to create that deficit. Then you've undone it with a few bad choices on a weekend. You know what I mean? Well, now I think makes the situation a lot worse, especially when you're hungover. Yeah, you well, just... we, obviously that draws us onto the alcohol as well. The effect that has on metabolism, it lowers your metabolism slightly while it's getting the uh, the alcohol out. And you know yourself when you stay too hard when you're hungover, what do you want to eat to make yourself feel better? You comfort eat when you're hungover. Ah, uh, you do. Um, yeah. You comfort eat. So knowing how you can either limit the damage with the calories that you overconsume, knowing what alcohol it brings, or slightly less in calories, so you're going to do less damage knowing how to fit certain meals and certain numbers, takeaways into your numbers, but all, just also being mindful of your exercise as well. Like if you know you've got a heavy night coming up or a social occasion where you're going off track, you've got to move beforehand, create some more deficit, move before, move after. Don't just see it as a, as a weekend opportunity just to sit on your ass and do nothing for two days because if, if anyone's watching who's got the mentality that you think you can get the body and the feeling out of life that you want, if you could die Monday to Friday and then totally binge on a weekend, you're forever going to be chasing results. Oh, you're no. never going to be happy. Never going to be happy. And that's that's so never. powerful that most of the people live their life like this. Monday to Friday diet has all off track on a weekend. And that is why they continue to go around in circles and not get the results that they want. And it's, uh, it's such a sad thing because for a few simple things that we obviously teach inside here and that you learn about, um, you are able to change that. Just stop making a few like-for-like -like changes, won't you? I definitely, definitely. I think uh, I just put the time and effort in, really. I think that was it. Yeah. Some people well, you, don't. You yeah, know. Well, that's it, Brian. You, you, you said before you failed a lot of times, but you didn't really fail because you kept coming back and kept trying again. Every time you I, failed, you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? How can I improve? Took you a couple of attempts, but you, you, you kept it showing up, mate. Learning curves. That's so what I took it. Every time you fail, it's an opportunity for you to learn. I failed, right, more times than people's even tried. I failed multiple businesses, multiple diets, failed relationships and all that kind of stuff. I failed a lot in life. So it failed myself a lot of times, let all that people down a lot of times. But you know what? I kept showing up. I kept showing up and I, and I got it right eventually. It only takes that one time to get it right. Once you get it right, it does. You, you can see the path of the rest of your life in front of you, but you're not going to be there if you give up, are you? No, never, man, never. So moving on, give us your top tips for diet hacks, for things that you eat every day that you, you know fits your macros, just the best nutrition products that you use. Right, so my me, me basic plan is uh, the turkey rashers and the bagels are, are probably the best thing in my plan because theoretically it's a bacon sandwich so that's quality uh, the 5% mince I enjoy that because I can turn it into burgers or I can turn it into chilli still hits me macros like we've touched on before ice lollies big thing oh man now, I love what, what's your favourite ice lolly? Uh, I'll just like you know the uh the liquid one, not the liquid one, like ice pops or something. The long Just the regular ice pop. Oh, I like orange and uh, raspberry ones. I like them. Do you, are you not? Get yourself the Aldi, mate. They've got a load of their like best ice cream on ice pops that like the knockoff versions. So there's like a tube of like oh, twist yeah. stars and fabs and bubble gum lollies. Honestly, mate, the whole range is about 45 calories in each ice pop, around about 10, 10 11 grams of carbs. I, I love That's them. Nice. I've been loving the cherry, you know, rocket lollies. Aye. I've got cherry cola lemonade rocket lollies. I've been having four of them a night, but I've been making them for I'm going to get... I'm gonna have to get me sell there to... before it shuts. Like, uh, we mentioned this previous couple of minutes ago the ice cream. Best thing I've ever found that thing. That is what, out of this what, world. What's your favorite flavor, flavor Halo Top, Brian? Cookie dough, is this? Cookie dough. Oh, mate, have you tried red velvet? No, I haven't tried that one. Cookie dough is nice. I'm going to have to. I'm gonna... Every time I go, they've got none in. That's right. the thing. Oh, it's cool. Just getting in. their halo top, like, especially when it's on offer. Especially when it's on offer. Uh, in 
probably again, like I said before, I know I've said it before, the chocolate's a big thing. Knowing you can have yeah. that one little bit of junk food at the end of your night makes your day so much better. I know that, mate, and that's, that's, that's powerful. I'm, I'm trying to get me light here because I'm listening to you. <laughs> that's, that's powerful, isn't it? Knowing what nice products that you that most people would categorise as junk food and being able to put it in your macros, it's uh, it's crazy powerful and that's, uh, well, that's yeah. a major thing to allow you to follow and, and, and ultimately succeed in your diet because if you try and cut out all of the nice foods, you'll fail. You will fail every time because life is not about depriving yourself of nice tasting food. Life is about setting yourself empowering inspiring missions that you can live to create the best life possible while enjoying yourself definitely that it is it is we've oh, obviously well, mentioned before the 80 20 rule brian so the oh, i was just gonna rule, i was just gonna t- mention that the 80 20 rule is if you imagine look at your life 80 percent of the time you need to be on track you need to be following your diet you need to be like, aligned towards your goals and 20 percent of the time allow yourself that 20 percent within your life within your time your energy to fuck up to to mess around to eat dirty food or you know go out on the drink or you know just be a little bit you know maybe demotivated because everyone has those days where you're not your best just give yourself that 20 percent. if you know you're 80 percent on track with your goals your numbers your nutrition your job your career your mindset you know your positivity you're doing all right so i think taking the pressure off yourself to be 100 percent perfect because people who take who put pressure on themselves to be perfect in every aspect of their life to look perfect to act perfect to to have the perfect body, the perfect, you know, looks, the perfect clothes, the perfect car, the perfect life. You're just opening yourself up for a fail because oh. that's that's a fantasy. And it's the same with your nutrition. If you think you'd be bang on eating chicken and rice and all this, you know, healthy food every day without any little bits of junk, you're going to fail, aren't you? You're going to fail. Definitely. I think uh, living a life that's not yours, I think living in someone else's shoes, you know, wanting the flash stuff and all this and that, and you know when you can do it, you just want to fail because you're just psyching yourself up to be that person. And when you kind of be that person, you just come crashing down when I get to my books. Oh, yeah. I know, mate. I know you've got to live your life by your highest values. You know, there's something to be said for figuring out what your highest values are. You know, so relating to you, Brian, your highest values, you obviously love cycling. You love pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone. Um, but what other values do you currently live your life by? Uh, take it day as it comes. You know, not, not, not every day is going to be... Not, you're not going to wake up every day feeling out of this world and you're going to smash it you, some people are going to have bad it's, it's natural you know what I mean yeah. you have a bad day I told, you, I told you today Brian I messaged you yesterday and said ah, I wasn't having a good day today and I took a few few hours off work to try and get my head right you know and I'm I'm one of the most positive inspiring people you'll meet you know I'm not I'm not scared to say that because I inspire myself with what I do you know I love what I do but some days I wake up and I'm very drained and tired like a lot of other people and it affects me mentally you know so um, you, you have to take the pressure off yourself but it's, it's just important to know what actions you can take to make yourself feel better. Big one for me is, we touch on this, the only reason I got into these type of people was through you, or through your inside programme and that. Uh, Paul Mort, I listen to him in his podcast, they're very good. Yeah. If you haven't, if, if people like mindset and figuring out your mindset, and I do suggest you go and listen to him and James oh, yeah. Smith. Well, yeah, both of them are world class. Yeah, James Smith, obviously I look up at James Smith a lot because he's involved in the industry I'm in. Um, so yeah. seeing the things he's done, you know, like he obviously talks about nutrition and calorie deficits, but it's about mindset as well. And it's about it's about it's about approaching it with that open mind, saying you know what, you don't have to be perfect. We're not humans are humans are all imperfect. There's not there's not one over here is perfect. We've all got flaws. We've all got negative negative um, values that may be aren't the best thing for the world. But you know what? It's about embracing each other. It's about accepting each other for who we are. And it's about accepting yourself for your flaws as well. And if you do yeah. that, which obviously James Smith talks about that a lot. If you do that and just go in with an open mind, that has a huge impact on your results in terms of your diet. Because if you, you've got all these conflicts about yourself, about your life, about who you really are, about what your values are, about your confidence, if you've got all these conflicts going on in your mind, how the fuck can you stick to your diet? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? So this is obviously what we're doing the one-to-one coaching program. It's not just about nutrition and training. It's about figuring out who you are, figuring out what makes you tick, creating a powerful, purposeful mission for yourself. And since that first phone call, Brian, that we had, four months ago we 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 set some targets that was going to put you on your mission you know what i mean oh i definitely we did if, we're still setting them now you're, you're, be as big. Exactly. exactly so that brings up my next question brian what's your future goals if we're having this conversation in a year's hey. time where, where do you want to be mate we touched on this subject before try and get some abs i don't think i've ever said this before but i don't think i ever thought about getting some abs but if we can get some it'll be great why hey. not mate why not stay the stay the size I am like get some abs so I don't probably want to get 
any more leaner than abs because I think I've always been the type of person to be broad and big. Do you know what I mean? I've always been that type of person. And probably the biggest thing for me was with the weight loss is my mindset. I want to keep this mindset. I don't want to ever drop yeah, off yeah. this of mindset. Course. I couldn't think of myself going back to the way I used to live, not physically, but mentally. Do you know what I mean? Waking up in a rost every single day. It's hard work, isn't it, mate? It's very draining when you are not living your life where you truly want to be. It's draining. You know, most people, they live lives of quiet desperation, Brian. It's not enough for them to have meltdowns. Some people have meltdowns, you know. Um, it's not enough for them, to, you know, to to maybe be, you know, in that zone to where, like, they want to give up on their life, obviously. But most people, they're unhappy with their life and they just live a life of quiet desperation, never really being who they want to be, never really looking the way they want to look, never really achieving the things that they really want. And they just settle for seeking comfort in their life, seeking the easy way out, seeking food to make themselves feel better, settling for a body you don't like, settling for a life you don't like, mate, and it's draining, you know? So I think you hit that point, mate, where you were rock bottom in terms of your confidence, the way you felt, and you were like, I've had enough. And how powerful was reaching that point, Brian? Oh, it was... People don't understand how powerful it is, do you know me? Because you know you want to change so badly, but the only person that's going to help is yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? You you sat there, you guided us, and like you said, you guided me the way, but the only person that put in the work and do the effort was me. You can't come and get me ass out of bed yeah, to yeah. go on a run. You can't drag us out to go shopping to buy the food. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I spend well, 25 quid a week on all my food, 25 quid a week, around 25, 30 quid. That's less than average night out. Do you know what I so mean? So that just dispels that myth of, oh, eating healthy is uh, eating healthy is too expensive. I see it mean the other day, Brian, and actually a few people that know shit is, and I was almost tempted to comment because I was a little bit triggered, but I was like, nah, what's the point? It was something on the lines of like, oh, the reason that there's an obesity problem in the UK is not because they're showing junk food adverts before nine o'clock. Did you recently see the uh, Boris Johnson said he's going to get rid of junk oh, food I... adverts or something on the table before nine o'clock, which is just stupid, by the way. And um, so this person made this meme saying, oh, the reason that British people are facing an uh, obesity epidemic because one in three people now, you know, Brian, one in three people worldwide are either overweight or obese. I mean, that's a pretty shocking statistic, isn't nice it? Bad, it. Um, you know, there's one in three people out there in the world, you know, 33% of the people in the world who are not happy with how they look or they're not in peak health to basically have the life no, that they want. Well, anyway, that's a different topic for a different argument. Anyway, this meme was saying the reason that the UK has an obesity problem is not because they're showing junk food adverts before nine o'clock. It's because, like, a packet of, like, some kind of healthy food, they said, costs, like, you know, four quid when a, a right. burger costs 99 pence. And they're basically people in the comments saying, yeah, that's the reason I'm overweight. It's too healthy. I've got no, I haven't got a job. It's too, it's too much to eat healthy. And I was like, you are full of shit. You are full of shit. I know loads of people. Loads of my clients ask me, Sam, um, I, I want to start this diet, but I'm worried about a budget. And I'm like, you know what? If you shop here and you eat this and you do that, you can absolutely eat healthy. Aldi eat works wonders. It's, uh, Aldi's amazing. I mean, I'm going there before mm. Chuds. I'm going to get the Chuds at 10 I'm going to get some Aldi's on. I mean, honestly, that, I just want to say that for people right now. Anyone who thinks eating healthy is expensive, you are either looking in the wrong place or you are, or you are just lying to yourself to stop you from following a diet. If that's the one thing that's holding you off from achieving the results that you want and starting that diet and losing that body fat that you don't want, that is a bullshit excuse. I'm just going to call people out on that. It is not expensive to eat healthy. If you're eating, eating from a meal prep company and you're eating out on the go and want healthy food, yeah, because you know what? People, healthy food's in demand. So companies, supermarkets, restaurants, when they are healthy-ish, they will up the price because they know there's a higher demand. But if you can be bothered to get yourself to the shops and buy a bag of chicken and buy a, a bag of 5% meat or, you know, lots of fresh vegetables and fruit, the cheapest chips, I know for a fact people spend 30, 40, 50 quid a week on takeaways and another 100 quid see. a week on drink. I was just going to say, I've had people quid a week on drink, and then McDonald's a little bit more on, uh, on a bag of Santa's eyebrows. You know what I mean? That, that, that's right. the kind of stuff that they do on a weekend. You know what I mean? And then they've got they've got the audacity to say eating, eating healthy is too expensive, and that's what's holding them back. I'm sorry, I just have to call people out on that one. That is, there's no way fat loss and approaching a healthy diet is too expensive. No way, because we know how much people spend on seeking convenience. You know what I mean? Well, a, don a Domino's or something, isn't it? It costs like 12 quid minimum for a pizza or something. I bet yeah. a couple of people get that. Plus a McDonald's, there's about 25 quid you've spent yeah. a week. I, I know I've got mates who go to work. They take 20 pound to work for their dinner and they don't come back with it. They go, oh, they go no. to the burger van, they go to the shop, they get a couple of coffees, 20 quid a day they're spending on food and they've, then, they've, then, they've got, then they've got the audacity to say they can't afford a gym membership <laughs> for 20 pound a month. What? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, Brian. Crazy. People will always 
that that mentality is what's keeping people up up unhappy with the way they look and the way they feel it's that they are seeking short-term comfort and convenience over everything and they will allow that to blind their judgment about what a healthy diet is you know so you know it, it's uh, it's you know challenging your mindset on those sort of things is uh, is powerful mate this is the last question brian i've got for you mm-hmm. which is just as well because i've got no light left <laughs> so, <laughs> last question, mate. what advice would you give anyone who's starting out right now who's starting your business i'm going to share i'm going to share this screen again because I want people to see what you achieved again. So you got any advice for people who are just like what you are right now, who are not following a diet that they love, they are sick of feeling the way they do, they lack confidence, they haven't found an exercise they love yet, they are unhappy with, they are frustrated with their actions, just want to change. They're ready, they've accepted, look, I'm not happy, I want to change. What advice you got for them? I got like four or five good tips. One, eliminate negative effects in your life. Get rid of them. They're not going to help you. Number two, find something you enjoy. We've touched on that. I fell in love with cycling. I probably didn't fell in love with cycling. It probably wouldn't have happened. Might have, might not have. Number three, eat the food to enjoy. Don't make your food boring. Don't go with bland chicken breasts and what not. And no, number four, create a positive impact on, other, on yourself. Don't bring yourself down in the dumps and drag yourself along the floor because you didn't achieve this and you haven't achieved that. I think we took baby steps at first and then we've managed to peak. And it's just the way cookie crumbles, really. Not everyone's life's Great perfect. Point. Everyone's Great got point. barriers in the way. I've had myself, you have yourself, you know. Life's not perfect, but you just got to deal with it the way you can deal with it in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, good, great, some great points there, Brian. So I'll just run through those. But you obviously said negative things. And I think the environment that people surround themselves in, whether that's people, by the way, there's no such thing as negative people, really, because people are just worrying about themselves. It's your perception on those people. But if you perceive someone as negative, don't don't have them in your life. You don't have to have people who don't align with your goals. If someone stresses you out, frustrates you, you don't see eye to eye. You don't have to, you don't have to keep that relationship going. You don't have to keep that. You know that interaction going. If you do, if if someone doesn't align with your personal values, get rid. You don't have to be around people that you don't like. You don't have to be around people who are not on the same mission as you. If anything, being around people who are on a different mission to you and have different values does nothing but hold you back because you'll just be you'll be conflicted. When you conflict, you can't be your best. So that's that's insane. That uh, that point. You know the the fact that how how much a negative influence, whether that's a job, a relationship, a friend, a family member whether that's just some kind of habit you've got, some kind of negative influence on your life can literally stop you from achieving the results that you want. So you've got to be so critical on your own and the people in your life, you know, the things you surround yourself with, are you on social media too much? Have you got a bad habit that you've got that lowers your state? You've got to get clear on what your negative habits and influences are within your own personal environment. You've got to come up with a strategy to change that. Unless you remove those things, you'll never be your best. You know, you're you're lowering your potential. You're lowering your, imagine you've only got so much headspace You've only got so much positivity available. If it's filled with shit that makes you feel good, I'm sorry, that makes you feel bad, you're only working with a, a tiny percentage of your, of your brain. You've only got enough brain power to do not much. You know what I mean? So you've got to, you've got to clear your headspace and get rid. You know, it's like an iPhone. If you've got an iPhone full of crap pictures that take up all your storage, your phone's not going to work properly. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you need to get rid of all the shit in your mind and in your and in your life that holds you back, that stops you from performing at the at the highest level. So being critical of the things that you don't like in your life and getting rid of them. A lot of people they just settle for things they don't like and then complain. The life's not where they want. Your life's not I, where you want because you're not willing to take the things out of it that stress you out. You know, so being critical and, and making some huge changes and not being scared to do it is is that's the first step to get you on this path. Great definitely, point, mate. Definitely. <laughs> Obviously, the, you mentioned about the uh, eating the foods you love. That's a huge one as well. Obviously, we've covered this, but like I say, related to specific nutrition, if you if you continually eat foods you don't like, you're not going to follow a diet. You're always going to rely on willpower. And if you rely on willpower to get you through your diet or your training, you will fail every time. Willpower will win simply because um, willpower is fickle. You need a higher leverage than willpower. You need something more powerful to, to continue on with your diet than just, oh, I'm going to follow it. Oh, I don't really like this food, but I know it will give us a six-pack. Six-pack's nice, but... <laughs> It's it's not it's not powerful. It's not it's not enough to get you up off your arse and really dig deep into that into that pain threshold. You know, so you need something better than oh, I just want to lose weight. You need a powerful why. You need to have a powerful why behind what you're doing, and you need to you need to prop yourself up on things that you can do with ease. So foods you love, training you love. You know that that's powerful. But 
Um, I think the last point you mentioned was like, just be confident. Obviously you said be confident and just to kind of like be honest with yourself, but that comes simply from doing the work, you know? So like I said, setting yourself baby steps, what we did, you said at the start, if you told me at the start, Brian, when you signed up in April again, so I'm want to lose £65 by the 80th of August by today. I would have said, Brian, forget about that, mate. You've got to no, lose £1 first, bud. You've got to lose one. You've got to lose one pound first, bud. You know, it's like the, it's like the, the businessman saying, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. It's like, well, you know what? Great, but you've got to make one pound first before you make a million. It's like baby steps. What is the first step? So you've got to get clear on your strategy. What is your strategy to achieve the goals that you want out of life? You know, if you said, oh, I want to lose 65 pounds and you didn't create a strategy how you'd lose that first pound, you wouldn't achieve where, where you are now. You've got to have a strategy, baby steps. Set yourself one target at a time nail it i seen something great on instagram the day you know elon musk yeah yeah see that this mentor page that i followed give you an insight of how he plans his day he sets his day into like five they're called time boxes or something so he'll give himself like five or ten minutes to do a really valuable task then he'll take a break and he'll come back and do another task he does one thing at a time and he'll take a break one thing smart man one thing, you know, learn from the best. If, if you're like, I've got to do this, 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 and you think, oh, all this goal, that's like you've got 100 micro goals to hit before you hit that goal. If you're just aware of the end goal, you're not aware of what you need to do specifically. And that's why people get overwhelmed. They're, they're not clear on their priorities. So, you know, just doing the work, but being able to generate a strategy, that's just one step at a time, one step at a time, because you can't achieve your ultimate goal without achieving all those baby steps. You can't. Ask. No, yeah, you have to go through it. It'll be, it's hard at the first couple of weeks, but once you get flown, it just gets better and better and better, you know? I know, mate. I know, mate. So, I actually have a few questions. I posted inside the uh, the group, mate. Not that one. I posted inside the group. Um, if, I said, if anyone wants to ask Brian a question, let me know. So, I think a few people commented, mate. So, I'm just going to get those up. Just going to get those up. Where are we at? I'm literally in the dark now. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's, the content it's, world class that's what matters so where are we I've got two questions so Tracy hi Tracy has asked you Brian what was the biggest challenge over the last four months eh, the biggest challenge was going back to the normal reality of getting up each day and going back to work yeah. I think for three I think that was getting me what I used what I'd done previous to be able to fit in with what with how my life was going to turn out obviously lockdown happened so I wasn't doing out but I managed to implement like riding my bike to work yeah yeah that so that was I, I, we touched on that in the in the on the whatsapp text and that that was that was that's what I was scared about falling back in the way I was with going back yeah, to work but again again of, Brian you just had to ask yourself that question well okay my circumstances have changed now what can I yeah. gain from this? What do I need to change? So you knew, what can I gain from this by going back to work? There was an opportunity for you to cycle the work, wasn't there? And you took it. Oh, I. You know, so you have to ask yourself that question as well. Well, if your circumstances change and maybe something challenge, a new challenges come across, like, oh, I've got longer shifts now, it's going to affect me meal prep. Right, what can I gain from this? What is this challenge trying to show me? What is it trying to tell me? And every time you, you approach a challenge like that, rather than running away from it, there's loads of people... Um, can follow a diet and one thing can change like one one change in that schedule and that's it they'll not follow it again whether they're back to work their food preps out the window they're just not willing to pick up that schedule and set the new target I know you I know you do it so obviously like you get up in the morning don't you you do a, like a, some activity in the morning to set yourself your day ahead or a walk or something yeah. so obviously the bike thing for me that was that was great that because you've literally just woke up and you're doing some sort of exercise or something and yeah, it's quality. Well, it's, it's a state changer, isn't it, Brian? Instead of most people get up, what do they do? Most people, when they wake up, straight on their phone. Aye. You know what? I, I do it with, when I'm half asleep. I'll go over, I'll walk over to the bathroom, go to the toilet, whatever. I'll sit on my phone and I'm like, what am I doing? I'll get up, I'll go and chop it in the room. I'm not touching my phone the first half hour of the day. It's all the, in the first half hour of the day. It's all about getting your head, you know, out of this fantasy land that you've just been in when you've been asleep into the real world and getting them truly aligned with your goals, your mission your empowering mission that you are on, because that's what life's about. It's about following your own mission. So many people, they're not, they don't even know what that mission is. They're just bundling through life, waiting for the next thing that upsets them. That's uh, what life is. That's what life for most people. Just a life of quiet desperation, just waiting to be stressed. Just, oh, I'll go to work and then see what happens, and I'll wait for the weekend. It's just to make it to the weekend. You know what I mean? If you're not <laughs> in line with your purposeful mission, 
You know, you've got to be, you've got to put your attention on your intentions, your own personal intentions. If you wake up and you sit on your phone, you've just left your world and you've entered other people's world. You're more focused about what other people are doing on that phone than what you're focused on with your life. You've started your day off wrong. So you need to get rid of that phone. You need to do something that gets you breathing going, you know me, I go on a cold shower. I'm not saying everyone has to go on a cold shower. I do them now, the quality. Do something that changes your state from being disempowered to empowered. Something that changes your mindset from, I'm waking up today and I'm excited to hit my goals. And that only comes from action. You know, so for you, it was riding a bike. For other people, it might be a shower. For other people, it might be a walk in the morning. It might be reading. It might be meditating. It might be yoga. You know, it might be having a breakfast that you love, that you know, starting the day off right with your macros that fits right. You know, whatever you do, don't do something on the morning that lowers your state. I'm a big believer in this. If you dominate the morning, you dominate the day. And um, so great question, Tracy. Obviously, don't know about the biggest challenge over the last four months. For Brian, it was obviously transitioning out of lockdown, which he thrived in, back to the normal world, wasn't it? Yeah, I was, I was, I was worried yeah. about really worried. But again, what did you do, Brian? You just come up with a new strategy, mate? I do. Yeah, because what, what you're doing now is not enough to get you to the next level. If that makes sense? Because yeah. if what you're doing now is enough to get you to the next level, you would already be there. So if you ever reach that point where you're like, you know what, I want to achieve this, then it means you've got to do something different than what you're doing now. Because what you're doing now isn't good enough to get there. So that's whether you hire a coach or you reach out to a friend or you change your strategy, you put a bit more effort in with your time, your energy, you go to bed earlier, you do meditation on a morning, I don't know what it is. You've got to add in something that's going to get you to the next level. If you continue to do the same things you've always done, you're not going to be where you want to. So being critical with that, you know, understand that whenever a challenge does come, like for you, you thrive through lockdown, work come back to normal. You had to change your strategy, didn't you? If you did the same thing you'd done during lockdown, it wouldn't have worked, would it? No, definitely not. I didn't have time on my hands. Yeah, so yeah, Enough Tracy, time. to answer your question, it's all about whatever challenge you've got. Great question, by the way, but whatever challenge you've got, it's understanding that what you've previously done will not be enough to get you there. It will not be enough to get you there. You know, what you've previously done will never be enough to get you there because if it was, you would have already been there. You've got to do something different, whether that's a perspective shift, an actual action, whether that's reaching out for help, delegating a task, hiring a coach, I don't know. You know, have a think. You know, so whatever challenge you've got, what else do you need to do? What else do you need to change to reach it? Lucy has asked, well, was there any points when you fell off the wagon? If so, how did you get back on track? You did, Brian. You've had a few days where you fell off track, haven't you? Everyone does. Uh, the last couple of days have been hard, obviously, with what happened with yeah. oh, on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, yeah. and plus I'm Brian, really you're going to have to tell people because they'll be asking what happened. Uh, so, I got smashed off my bike on Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I think about now I laugh back at it, but... Uh, I wasn't really laughing at the time. Like, I was so... Yeah, I wasn't even when you said. <laughs> so Sunday, Monday, and today, I haven't really trained much. Obviously, I can't ride yeah. the bike yet in bits. The gym, I haven't even... Th- I've thought about going, but I, do, I don't even want to try and do it, to be honest, because I'm i still sore. Yeah, but obviously with this, program, Obviously, with, I'm going to Amsterdam at the weekend, like we've touched on it, so... Oh, what day are you going, Brian? 21st, which is the Friday till the Monday. I'm not... I'm going to go, mate. Like we, like we said, I'm not... I'm not staying at home. Yeah, Brian, I'm going on Sunday, mate. You're going on Sunday? So I'm in, I come back on Monday. Are you in, are you in Amsterdam on Sunday? Sunday, like, I am. Who are you going with? Uh, just a couple of lads. Oh, it's for me, mate. Well, I'm oh, class, mate. I'm buzzing for that. Yeah, I had to change uh, my flight, mate, because I would have missed, missed this as something I had to attend in a couple of weeks due to the quarantine. Yeah. Um, so I had to, obviously, I had to rearrange it, so I just ended up rearranging my flight to go a couple of days earlier. So, mate, I'll see you in Amsterdam next see week. You but I <laughs> just, uh, just when you fell off the wagon, get back and you know, like, we, I think we touched on it before. I went, I stopped working for you for, with, for a week. And I think we were both worried about I was going to fall back in my own habits. But just learn from what you've done. Like, that's, how I, that's how I do it. What can, you, what can I gain from this? Like I said before, I've fucked up more times than people can imagine. Like within every aspect of my life, you name it, I've messed up. But now if I do mess up, I ask myself this question, what did I learn from it? Instead of throwing your toys out the pram and just going, oh, the world's going to end, it's not fair. What most people do when things go wrong, by the way, ask yourself, what the hell did I learn from this experience? What did I learn? What can I gain from it? How would I do this differently next time if this situation happens? So if I'm going to be depth on this question, Lucy, if, I, if you were to ask me this question, if you fall off the wagon, first off, you've got a draw line in the sand. You can't control the past. You can't change the past. If you fell off track, you fell off track. Don't punish yourself. Don't starve yourself for when you fell off track with your dad. Just get back on track with your normal numbers. But ask yourself, you've got to review it. You've got to reflect. Because if you don't, you'll do the same thing again, won't you? So figure out oh, what was the barrier. What was the barrier that caused you to fall off track? How did it happen? 
How did it make you feel? What impact did it have on your results? Okay. Once you're aware of those questions, ask yourself, what will you do if that situation happens again? How could you handle it better? Pre-plan it. Review the situation. If you just say, oh, well, it happened and I don't know why I fell off track. You're just running away from the truth. You need to ask yourself that question, which is why reviewing is so important. Obviously, we do a lot of reviewing in the coaching program because it's it's powerful. You know, it's powerful. It is. It is. So um, I'm just going to, well, there's no more questions really, is there? So um, I don't think there's any live either. Let me have a look. I don't think there is, mate. I don't no, think there is. Let's just see if I can get it up. Just see if there's anyone who's commenting live. Where are we at? I've got that many things open. I think, is it this one? <laughs> is it that one? I think it's this one. Is there any comments we've got live or anyone who's watching live, guys? Don't think we've got them. Don't think we've got them. Well, Brian, mate. No worries. It's uh, absolutely pitch black. I didn't know uh, what time this pretty <laughs> well. I need to get a light for the next time. Aye, uh, you do. Anyway, mate. Anyway, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Stuff. Get this program and limitless training out of ten. Both ten. Whoa, both yeah, change yeah, me. Go, go stuff both, you, <laughs> both. They both change me life massively. You know what I mean? So appreciate that, Brian. Mate. Appreciate both that. Me so life what would be your advice for other people who are maybe thinking about joining this program? The, the, the which one? The Project Limitless one. Project Limitless. Do it. It's great. If you if you if you want to go out on the weekend and you want to still enjoy social activities and whatnot, and you don't have a clue about macros, but you want to somehow lose a little bit of weight, gain some knowledge. Do it. It's cheap as chips, yeah. isn't it? Amazing. Yeah, it's the best forty-seven pound you'll ever spend, Brian. Yeah, it's cheapest. Great cheapest stuff, mate. Chips. Right. Thank you for uh, for coming on, Brian. I know for a fact you would have positively impacted a lot of people there. It's amazing to see your story. Um, and this is not the uh, this is not the end. I think we'll be doing more podcasts and videos in the future because the results that you're going to get this time next year, mate. I'm uh, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. So you just continue doing what you're doing, bro. Okay. Right. Have a good night, mate. You too, mate. Thank you for coming on, bro. I'll see, see you soon. soon.